Ho, ho, ho. No, I'm not Santa, but I am here with a gift. Another hashtag JavaScript Miss Challenge from Scrimba. In this video, I'll show you how to do some real world string validation. And oh yeah, it's Christmas. That's better. All right, so let me start by saying that this video is sponsored by Scrimba, but I never put anything in my videos that I don't believe in. I've already done lots of shout outs for them in the past for just their platform in general, as well as their uh, web development career path that they have on their platform as well. So today I wanna to talk about the 24 days of hashtag JavaScriptmas, which I think is pretty cool. And what this is, is basically an advent calendar of JavaScript challenges that you get to do. If you sign up, you'll get all these JavaScript challenges. And if you complete them and then post your solutions on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, including the hashtag JavaScriptmas and a link to your solution, you'll be entered to win a prize. And what they're doing is every day from the 1st to the 24th, they're giving away a free year membership to Scrimba, pretty sweet. And then in addition to that, on Christmas Eve, they're doing a drawing of everyone that's entered to give away uh, not only a year membership, but also a $1,000 cash prize, which is really cool. So you should definitely check it out. Go with the link below to sign up for the challenge, and then you'll get access to something like this, the Valid Time Challenge. Now, I wanna say with this challenge that we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you kind of like the basic solution to this, and then I'm gonna show you some more real world scenarios, some real world things that you need to check in your JavaScript. So you don't wanna miss out on that. So make sure to stick around to the end to see the full solution. But let's go ahead and talk about what we're doing. Well, this is a valid time function where we wanna check a string and make sure it's a valid time based on military time, what we call it in America, or just the 24 hour clock. And for Americans, this is not something that we use very often and this can be kind of tricky for us, but I think we'll get through it. So what we'll do is we'll have a function that will accept a string and we need to validate whether or not uh, the time is appropriate. And what that really means based on these test conditions is that it's within a range of the hours of zero to 23 and the minutes from zero to 59. You can see 1358 is valid, 2551 is invalid because 25 is not a valid hour, and then 76 is not a valid number, so this one is false as well. So if we come into here, you see we've got a couple of tests that do those tests that were in that description, and uh, those will kind of run when we run this code. So let's go ahead and get started, and we're going to start by splitting this string into two parts. So if you see these uh, examples down here, they have uh, two separate numbers that are separated by a colon. So we can do a parts and say this is going to be our string dot split and we're going to split based on that colon. And then let's just look at uh, what we get here. What we should get is an array with two different parts. So let's look at our console down here and you see we do get that array of two different parts. All right. And then we want to grab those two individual parts. So we'll grab our hours and this will be parts of zero. This will be the first one in there. And then we'll grab the minutes is parts of one. So the second item that's in that array. So now we have these two separate things. Now we need to check to see if they're in a valid range, but we also need to convert these things to a number. So we can do that by uh, just putting a number around this thing here, and that will go ahead and convert this thing appropriately. Now we need to check the ranges, and if the ranges are, are invalid, then we'll return false. So if uh, the hours is greater than 23, or the hours is maybe less than zero, we can return false. And then similarly, if the minutes is greater than 59, or the minutes is less than zero, we can return false as well. So if we get to this next line of code, we have not returned false, which means we will return true. So if we haven't proven that it's incorrect, we're basically assuming that it is correct. So let's run this and hopefully uh, we'll see that that all comes true. All of these tests pass and that's really cool. So if you expect all of your inputs to kind of look to be in this sort of format, this works great. But what if you start to mess this up and you have uh, just five in here? What if you did that? Well, that's not really a valid time, but according to our function, it does pass. Or what if uh, something just didn't pass a string in here? Or what if it just passed an empty string? What if we did that? Uh, well, that's passing and that's not right. So how do we fix this? And this is where uh, real world JavaScript comes into play, where even though we assume this string is going to be in a certain format, we don't actually know that. And we don't actually know that it's going to be a string. So we need to check those things as well. 
So uh, let's do a first check uh, to see if type of string equals string. So if it is actually not a string, then we return false. Okay, and then we want to do our split. All right, so let's move our split up here. And then we want to make sure that this has two parts. So if parts.length does not equal two, we return false, because that means it didn't have two separate parts separated by the colon. And then we also want to make sure that not only are there two separate parts, but those two individual parts actually have the correct length inside of them. So parts of zero dot length, if that does not equal two, or if the second part, the part in index one, if that's length does not equal two, then return false. So at this, at this point, we verified that we're actually getting a string input and then we parse or split that thing into the parts. And we wanna make sure that parts has two parts, has two items in its array. Uh, so we check the length to make sure that it is two. And then we check the individual items inside of it to make sure that those links are two. And so now if we did something like this, where we return a eight in here and not a second number, that should return false. If we still give a valid time, this thing should still be true. So that's good. And the last thing we wanna check is just making sure that these parts, the hours and the minutes are actually converting appropriately to a number. So if I were to have AA down in the string, for example, right now, it's gonna consider that thing to pass, but obviously those are not valid numbers. So what we can do is we can check to see if these did not convert appropriately. And the way we'll do that is we'll take our hours and minutes and we'll check to see, is it not a number? So there's a is nan function. So if it is, if hours is not a number, which means it didn't parse correctly, or if minutes is not a number, then we will return false. So let's give this a shot. Now this should return false because we've got the AA down here. If we did BB, that should be the same thing. If we now updated this to be a regular number, this should handle it appropriately. So again, in JavaScript, you don't really know, you don't have a guarantee that this input, this parameter is what you would expect. So we first type or check to make sure that it is a type of string. Then we go ahead and split those parts. We make sure that there are exactly two parts. Then we make sure that for each of those parts, they are exactly two characters long. Then we try to convert those things to numbers and if they don't convert appropriately, which is why we're checking if it's not a number here of hours and minutes, if either one of those is not a number, we return false. Uh, and then otherwise we do the logic that we already have. But I think this is just, for me, a really good thing to show beginner developers because we could have written the function with just the few lines of code we had to start, but we're forgetting all the other things that we might need to check. Now, if you use something like TypeScript, that's not the case because you know uh, know that the parameter is going to be a string, for example, and that's okay, but in JavaScript, it's basically a free-for-all, and we have to do everything we can to make sure that our code is good to go, no matter how people use it, uh, when they use it wrong, which they probably will. So 24 days of hashtag JavaScriptmas. These challenges are pretty sweet. Make sure you sign up for the advent calendar with the link below in the description to get all of your challenges. Now, the one last thing I want to show you is how do you get the link to share in your submission? Because you want to make sure you submit your thing so that you can be entered to win. So if you look in your bottom left hand corner and you hit this uh, save note button, uh, this green checkbox, you can hit that. And then after you do, this thing will be saved. And then in these three dots, you can open that in a new page. And here is your link to your note that you then submit. So you will take that link. You will post it on LinkedIn, Facebook or Twitter. Include the hashtag. I'm hashtag crazy right now, JavaScriptmas, and then leave the link to your solution and you will be entered to win either the prize, the daily prize of a year membership to Scrimba or, and or at the end on the 24th, they will be giving away a thousand dollars cash prize, what? And a year subscription to Scrimba. So make sure you check that out. So all in all, I hope that you enjoyed the video, another JavaScript challenge. I really would like to do more of these JavaScript challenges. So let me know if you'd like to see more of them uh, and what kind of challenges you would like to see. Hope that you enjoyed it. I think it's fun. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, whatever you celebrate. Hope that you have some good time with your family. Have some time to relax. Enjoy it. And I will see you in the next video.